I was dumb enough to think that, okay, I'm gonna do this by myself. I'm gonna be a self-sufficient man. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. The transition from college to university, especially med school, can be super challenging for a lot of people and I was no exception to this rule. I personally went through a lot of difficulties and challenges when it came to adapting to a completely new environment or experiencing new learning techniques and uh, teaching methods which I wasn't used to before or even the different types of assessments that I wasn't exposed to before in college. And not to mention the immense workload in med school, which was almost two to three times more uh, compared to college or compared to what I was used to. However, there is some good news for you guys. There are ways in which this transition can be made much easier. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five of those. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. And since time is the most precious thing in the world, here are the timestamps to my video so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you are interested in. The first thing I want to share with you guys is please, please, please do not be a note taking machine. And this applies not only to taking notes when you yourself are studying, but also taking notes during lectures. I personally know a lot of medics from my own batch who would sit down in the lectures and try and type out every single word that the professor would be saying. So please do not be that person, guys. Try and sit in the lecture and really listen to what the professor is teaching and hence pick and choose what you need to know and write down exactly the things that you must know or whatever the lecturer says is important. In that way, you are making it much more easy for yourself when you sit down later to self-study and you know what to focus on because you didn't simply write every single word that the professor was teaching you. Furthermore, when it comes to self-studying, what I did during the first year of my med school and the first semester of my second year was that I would type loads and loads of notes from lectures and textbooks and this would oftentimes result in an entire pile of documents which I had to go through before my exams. And mind you, I was taking these notes on my laptop which means I was typing these notes instead of handwriting. And even that took ages to do. Now in the third year of my med school, I have actually stopped taking all notes. Yeah, you heard me right, I do not take any notes at all. And this obviously means that now I have much more spare time which I can now utilize in making for example YouTube videos for you guys. Even though we haven't had our exams yet, but I still feel that this not taking any notes strategy is working out pretty well for me without sacrificing the quality of my learning. And here is a major tip guys when it comes to not taking any notes. Always ask your seniors for help. Please do not be afraid to go up to a senior and ask for their notes. Most of us are really nice and polite people and we would say yes, okay? So you come up to us and ask if you need any notes or any other help for that matter. Let me share a funny story with you guys. Now, my sister is also a medic and she will now be starting a sixth year or the final year in med school. And that means that she always had all her notes, handwritten notes, ready for me to use. But instead of using her notes to study, I was dumb enough to think that, okay, I'm gonna do this by myself. I'm gonna be a self-sufficient man. And I ended up making all my notes by myself, which actually cost me a lot of time. However, there are a few exceptions to this rule. In courses like biochemistry and cell biology, I would really suggest you guys to make your own notes because oftentimes in these subjects, you are tested on a lot of details in the exams. So when you have your own notes, it's gonna be much easier for you to hop into all those details and learn them by yourself. But please do not be a note-taking machine and free a lot of your time by simply asking your seniors for help. If you decide to ignore my first tip and still want to take notes, then by all means, go ahead. But please do not be too concerned with taking super pretty or good looking notes. Now, I know this may sound a bit controversial, but I firmly believe that unless and until you are doing this for the purpose of Instagram, where you have a page and you need to post notes or you need to post pretty looking notes for other med students out there, then that's completely fine. Or if you are the type of person who simply likes taking pretty notes, uh, and would rather spend their time doing that instead of other activities, then that's completely fine. By all means, go ahead. But if you are somebody like me who would save a lot of time and utilize that very time in other activities such as making YouTube videos, then please do not be too concerned with taking super pretty notes as that takes too much of your time. 
The third tip I have for you guys is to always try and understand the bigger picture. Because in med school, there are so many minor details uh, which could easily burn you out and you would simply drown in all those details and lose the bigger picture if you do not focus on that specifically. Again, there are a few exceptions such as biochemistry and cell biology where you do get tested on a lot of details. So those are the two exceptions. But the million dollar question is that how do you know if you have understood the bigger picture or not? The litmus test for this is ask yourself, can I explain this to a five year old? And this is a tip that I got from Ali Abdal and I found it to be absolutely incredible. A five year old would probably not understand a single word of biochemistry or cell biology, no matter how easy you make it. But the point here is that if you can condense that material and really simplify it in your own words, then that probably means that you have understood the bigger picture or understood the main idea of that topic. The next tip I have for you guys is to really use online resources. Now there are a lot of amazing tutors, online tutors and resources available which I also like to use at times such as Dr. Najib, Ninja Nerds, Ken Hub, um, Sam Webster and also this app called Complete Anatomy 3D where you can get the 3D model of the entire human body and you can just you know rotate and see from different um, angles and directions. I will post a link for some of these resources which I like to use in the description box below. Last but not the least, please be consistent with the work that you put in. Now it's much better to work for one hour every single day than to spend multiple hours or eight to ten hours uh, the days before your exams cramming the major chunk of that material. Even though cramming might help you perform um, good in exams, but you will probably not remember a major chunk of that material after your exams, which I believe is a major issue. Use instead other techniques such as active recall and spaced repetition or distributed practice, which are, according to evidence, the two most rewarding strategies for studying. And soon I will be making complete videos about these two and how I personally like to incorporate those in my study regime. That's a wrap for today guys. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Peace.